Hello, dear students. How are you? Uh, this is Dr. Shiraz Ahmed uh, talking to you on behalf of your electronics course. Uh, I have been looking at your grades, and uh, I'm very happy to see that you people are doing very good. And most of you are uh, getting good grades, uh, and I hope that you people will continue working like this and hope to have uh, good passing grades in your final exams and projects as well. Uh, but I have been regularly contacting you people through your email, through your internal messenger, uh, through these recordings as well. So uh, I want to say that uh, uh, do submit your assignments, pending activities, open class forum questions as soon as possible because now you are left only with a uh, few days i would say um, so we are now in the seventh week so i want all of you to get uh, very good marks in your final assessments in this lecture today i will be going through the v6 uh, boolean algebra combinational logic also we, i will be discussing the case study three uh, because this is a good opportunity for you people to uh, work on the assignment and get good marks in that. So coming to the slides and our lecture for today, I will be sharing the screen recording. So first of all, let's discuss your this case study three. That is, uh, that was in your week five. Uh, most of the students have not submitted yet. So I wanted to discuss uh, this case study so that uh, you should be able to uh, submit it in um, good condition and covering all the aspects of this assignment. So what is the objective of this case study? To contribute to your knowledge and a better understanding of the content held in this unit, we have prepared this case analysis to interiorize the knowledge and practice and develop oral expression abilities, written expression, assertive communication, and critical thinking. So the instructions for this assignment are, they are to assist to the open class of week five and participate in the discussion of the cases. And this corresponds to half of your grade, that is 50%. So that's why I was insisting you people that you have to submit this assignment very carefully and by thorough working because it corresponds to 50% of your grades. Now solve the following exercises and upload them in the space of the final work modality in week two or 50%. The addition of both will be the corresponding qualification, which percentage will be added to your regular evaluation. Now, what does this assignment demands? As we know that electronics is a tool for humanity. The ideas, concepts, and symbols used to understand and design devices around humanity have changed the human himself along the years. Now, where is a question that you are to reflect on this work? What are the fundamentals, functions of a resistor and a capacitor in a computer? So that is the first question you have to answer. Now, there is a case study. Read the next case and answer the following question. The case is one is on mechanics. Let's see. So there is a student called Steve. He doesn't know how it's possible to make a computer. He doesn't know how the circuit works. His teacher, Alfred, told him that the circuits work using logic. You have to understand first the Boolean logic where only two values, zero and one, are present. Now, my target for today, after this um, study of this assignment, that I will be taking a class on this Boolean logic. So if you are able to understand that lecture, it will be feasible for you to do this assignment then. Since Steve doesn't seem to be understanding what the teacher means, he told him 
that a microprocessor is the device with thousands of circuits thousands of circuits built in it and and that by the use of this an user can give instruction or represent simple mathematical operations that process is called combinational logic and by the use of simple instructions you can get the results you want so this is an example of so this is an example of combinational logic that is zeros and ones so in order to demonstrate the way the boolean logic works he gives david the next circuit now this below is a circuit this is actually a combinational logic circuit and that is actually representing the working of interpret the diagram that his teacher gave him do the truth table for the circuit and find the min terms and max terms and function represented by the circuit so if you need the references these are the resources available i shared last week and also there is a youtube lecture on it as well and also i am going to demonstrate the online lecture uh, for uh, today that i presented you in the last week for study so in order to solve this assignment to be in a better condition i want that you people should take my this lecture and that will be very helpful not only for the assignment for the final exams as well and in your uh, future life as well this is a very important topic for today so dear students let's start with the boolean algebra but before going on to the boolean algebra and its applications i want to put the first open class question over here So this is the first open class question it contains three parts what do you understand by boolean algebra why it is called boolean algebra means why the name is like this and is it the same as conventional algebra or how is it different from the conventional algebra so this is your first open class question for today so now on the screen you can see the different laws which the boolean algebra uh, is based on the first one is identity law 1 into a is a whereas 0 plus a is equal to a you can see in all these laws in this column they are mostly based on multiply and this is called and form on the other hand if you see this column 
there are different variables which are operated by a plus sign and they are based on or form so the first identity law 1 multiplied by a is equal to a and in the or form 0 plus a is equal to a this is the same as the conventional algebra null law 0 into a is equal to 0 1 plus a is equal to 1 idempotent law a into a is equal to a where as a plus a is equal to a now double a or triple a or four a's how many is they are multiplied the answer is one a this is not a square this is not a cube like the conventional algebra but the multiplication of many laws multiplication of many variables give one variable that is a similarly addition of more than one variable will result in one a the inverse law is given as a into a dash is equal to zero a plus a dash is equal to one now a dash means the complement of a if a is zero complement of a is one commutative law a into b is equal to b into a or in the or form a plus b is equal to b plus a then we have the associative law a into b into c is equal to a after multiplication b c similarly a plus b in bracket plus c is equal to a plus in bracket b plus c the distributive law a plus b c so a is first added with b and then a is added with c and both brackets are multiplied similarly in our form a into b plus c a b plus a c then we have the absorption law a into a plus b is equal to a this this can be easily proved uh, we can do that similarly de morgan's laws a into b whole complement is equal to a complement plus b complement and a plus b whole complement is equal to a complement b complement so we can see that if two variables are being multiplied the multiplication will change to plus and any variable without bar will come with bar and if there is a bar on individual variable then it variable will come without any bar so complement will cancel with the complement as i was asking you what is boolean algebra so the boolean algebra is the mathematical theory applied to combinational logic the boolean variables are symbols used to represent logic magnitudes and can only have two possible values either it can be one or high and it can be zero or low the boolean operations and the basic gates now the boolean operations are possible through the binary operations like negation addition and multiplication that is these combine two or more variables to form logic functions a gate is a circuit used to perform the operations mentioned before now the first very common operation in the case of boolean operation is the inversion or negation it is also known as complement this operation is denoted with a line over the variable or with an apostrophe in the previous slide we have seen a line above and in this case we can see the apostrophe on the upper right side of the variable now the apostrophe is an algebraic operator that inverts the value of a variable for example if x denotes an inverter input signal then x dash denotes the complement of such signal if x is equal to 0 then x bar is equal to 1 so this is a gate which we use for inverter so this gate is actually called the inverter gate if i give a as the input i will get a complement as the output so if a is 0 we get a 1 if a is 1 we get a 0 and this is the this is called a truth table the truth table actually represents the values for the input and the output so b is equal to b is the output that is equal to a complement and this shows the result of a logical inversion then we have boolean addition so boolean addition stands for x is equal to a plus b so 
this is called as or function if i have two inputs a and b and x is the output so we have 0 plus 0 equal to 0 0 plus 1 equal to 1 1 plus 0 is equal to 1 and 1 plus 1 is equal to 1 it is not equal to 2 it is not equal to 1 0 like the traditional conventional algebra but in boolean algebra it is actually equal to 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. This is a symbol for the OR gate. So this is the these are the two inputs and x is the output. Now the OR gate has minimum of two inputs. It can have three input, it can have four inputs, um, maybe somewhere it is more than four, but traditionally it is minimum of two input gates. Now, if, for example, I want a complement after the OR, then the function is called NOR. And in the NOR, all the, comp uh, all the inputs will be complemented or inverted. So this was 0, now it is 1. These three were 1, now they have become 0. So NOR is actually represented by A plus B whole complement. So as OR is A plus B, the complement represents the NOR. Then we have the Boolean multiplication. If I have two variables, they are now multiplying A dot B. Remember, there is no cross sign as in normal multiplication, but it is represented by dot. So x is basically equal to a dot b. So it multiplies the two incoming inputs. So 0 into 0 is 0, 0 into 1 is 0, 1 into 0 is 0, and 1 into 1 is 1. So this is the truth table for the AND function. This is a symbol for the AND function. So AND is like this. Uh, we have the two inputs and x is the output, which is a corresponding equation. Now, the inversion of the AND function is the NAND function. As in the case of OR, we had uh, the NOR. Now, in the case of AND, we have the NAND function. So, all the variables, they are now being inverted. So, these were initially three zeros and one. Now, it become three ones and a zero. Before going on to the next slide, I will ask an open class question over here again, and then we go further. Now the second question arises that first of all I have shown you the truth table of both the gates to compare them what you can interpret by these two gates. Secondly in the market NAND gate and NOR gates are known as universal gates. So why are they known as universal gates? That is the question for today. That is the second question class open class forum question. Going back to the slides. So this is a symbol for the NAND gate. So there is a bubble after the gate. So mathematically, we can write it as x is equal to a dot b whole complement. First, they are being multiplied. And then there is a complement afterwards. Now coming to the properties of the Boolean operations, as we have seen in the table on the first slide, 
So we have the computative loss in two variables for addition, x plus y is equal to y plus x. In the case of multiplication, x into y is equal to y into x. Now, associative laws in three variables. So first of all, b and c are being added. Like in the diagram, this is an OR gate and its input is fed into another OR gate with A is the input and we get A plus B into C. So that is equivalent if we first add A and B and the result is AND with the C, that is OR with the C. So these give me the same result. And similar is the case of multiplication. If I multiply B and C first or if I multiply A and B first, the results are the same. Now the distributive law. So first of all, A plus B plus C is added and then it is multiplied with A. So this is an OR gate taking input B and C and then A is being multiplied with AND gate. So it is equivalent if I distribute it like this A multiplied with B a multiplied with C and then they are being odd. So this is the distributive law in three variables. This can be easily proved with the help of the truth table. Now these are the Boolean theorems. This we have already discussed in the first slide. These are more or less the same things, but they are represented over here in the form of equations. These we have seen as uh, the table in the first slide. Okay, now before going on uh, to the Karnaf map and other things, we will see um, what is combinational logic and how the variables are being connected. So First of all, there is a demonstration of theorem 12, x into y plus x into y dash is equal to x. In this scenario, first of all, I can take x as common. So if x is common in the bracket, I have left with y plus y dash. So what is y plus y dash? This is equal to one. So x into one is equal to x. So if for example, there is the same variable, it is being multiplied with y and its y complement, I get the same thing. This is the theorem, which is a very important theorem called the De Morgan theorem. In the De Morgan theorem, I have shown that if, for example, in the bracket, I have uh, some variables with a complement and this complement is applied on the variables, then every plus sign will change to multiply. Every multiply sign will change to plus every variable with no complement that will be represented by a complement and if it is already a complement it will be finished so that is actually the de morgan's laws there are two laws we have seen in the first slide as well now the thing over here nor gate is equivalent to negative and it means that there are two inputs, they are being OR, and then there is a bubble. This is called X plus Y whole complement or NOR. If I shift this bubble on the start, that if they are complemented and then added, it is called negative AND. So NOR is actually equal to negative AND. Similarly, NAND is equal to negative OR. So negative OR means bubble first, then OR. NAND means multiply first and then bubble. So there's a difference between these two, but if you draw the truth table, they are the same. So we get another open class question over here.
so please draw the two staples for nand negative or nor and negative and and then compare them please check which two two staples are equivalent to one another then we have the simplification of boolean expressions if for example you are given a sim, uh, boolean expression and i want to get a simplified expression for it we have to use the formulae as we have seen in the slides for example if a is equal to a dot b complement c plus a dot b complement c complement so if i take a dot b complement as common in the bracket i am left with c plus c dash that is equal to 1 and i am left with a dot b dash similarly another example a dash plus b into a plus b complement first i multiply these terms a dash into a a dash into b dash then b into a and b into b dash now this is equal to 0 this is equal to 0 so i am left with this one similarly we can apply the formula and we can simplify the questions and expressions this actually help us in reducing of circuits so bigger circuits can be reduced to smaller circuits if we apply the formula correctly and we get the simplified results so if i draw the two table for this and the two table for this i will see that both two tables are identical to each other they will give me the same values but the circuit will be reduced now see another example you can see that there is a big expression but when i simplify it and apply the theorems on it so when the terms are being added and multiplied the terms we are going to reduced so finally i get a reduced expression like this so many terms have reduced to this one so being a simplified circuit now this is a logical symbol for the nor gate um, as i have also a question as well why they are known as universal gates so uh, if for example you are uh, simplifying the circuits and you have to make a design a circuit with a large number of gates so nand and nor provide you the simplicity that many gates can be replaced by only these two gates which are available in the market so logical functions can be implemented uh, using the circuit and the gates now for example this was an expression so there are four variables a b c d so they are four a b c d four variables first of all they were added so or gate then there is a bubble or complement they are being multiplied with c and then the thing is being added with t so this is a logical circuit for a given expression now what are the min terms and max terms this is a question which was asked in the assignment as well if for example i have an output function 0 0 as there are three variables so i can have eight possible combinations 0 0 0 0 0 and so on till i have 1 1 1 so the output function is triple zero if in main term it can be represented as a complement b complement c complement and dot if i take its complement it will become a plus b plus c this main term will become the max term similarly if i go at the end it is a dot b dot c but the max term will be a complement plus b complement plus c complement so again method to synthesize logical circuits uh this is the slide where 
it is explaining as I explained in the previous one, the difference between the min terms and the max terms. The same thing, they are also known as the min terms are also called standard sum of product form and the max terms are known as standard products of some form, SOP and POS. SOP stands for sum of products and POS stands for product of sums. You see, this is product of sum, POS. This is sum of products, SOP. Standard POS form. Standard POS form means where if there is an equation with four variables, then every term must contain the four variable. This is called standard POS form. Similarly, standard SOP form means if it's a question or expression of four variables, then every term must contain the four forms. For example, if I see this one, now it is not in standard form because it does not contain Z and W. So it must contain all the variables. Now to synthesize the logical circuits, we have four methods, SOP, sum of product form, POS, product of sum form, Karnaf map, and queen mikulski algorithm. Till now, we will stop over here because these were all the basic concepts which were required to understand your basic knowledge as well as to solve this case study three. And I hope that you people will be in a condition to now able to solve your case study three and please submit your assignments as soon as possible and go through this my recording as well. Again, if you have any query, any question, you can ask me anytime. So uh, that's all for today. And uh, I will be looking forward to your participation in the class and in notes and forums as well. And submit your assignments and activities as soon as possible. Thank you very much.